Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. Martin. Folks, last night I saw this tweet from the governor of Mississippi, Republican Phil Bryant. This is what he tweeted yesterday. Thank you to, to Donald Trump for signing legislation today to designate Medgar and Murley Evers home as a national monument. Senator Wicker and Senator Hyde Smith have worked very hard on this for some time and are to be commended. Okay. Why is this offensive? Some of you might say, hey, what's the big deal? It's a great thing designating the home of Murley and Megger Evers as a national monument. The problem is the three of them didn't have a damn thing to do with this. Congressman Benny Thompson, the only African-American congressman from Mississippi, has spent 16 years, 16 years fighting to make this a national monument. And then Phil Bryant wants to be such an ass that he congratulates only Republicans? It was not Senator Wicker or Senator Hyde Smith who led this. In fact, if you check the numbers, the three people who he mentioned, Donald Trump, Wicker, and Hyde Smith, were not even in office when Congressman Benny Thompson started to work on this initiative. This is a Republican governor trying to somehow completely erase what a black man had been working on for nearly two decades. And then Bryant tried to get indignant when he was asked about it by saying, why is Benny Thompson uh, trying uh, to get credit for this? Well, maybe because he was the one who made it happen, Governor Phil Bryant. Demetrius, I want to go to you. W look, what the hell's wrong with your party in Mississippi when here's this black member of Congress who worked his tail off to make this happen, and the governor of Mississippi doesn't even have the decency to credit the man who spent 16 years to make this come to pass? Well, the simple solution is to credit everyone who's involved. Like you said, this was something that's been going on. Did you say for 16 years? I believe that's the number no. of years. Congressman Benny Thompson introduced this in the Congress 16 years ago. Sure. Wicker wasn't even in the Senate. Hyde Smith wasn't in the Senate. Donald Trump wasn't even president. Sure, absolutely. My question is, well, what took so long? What was the, what well, was the hold all, up in, in, we're talking in, the, in the process six, 16 years ago? I'm actually like, why why are we waiting 16 years for this to finally come into oh, fruition? No, no. I, I understand that, but I want to deal with that Phil Bryant got even, he even got indignant towards Benny Thompson, essentially saying, uh, what is wrong with you demanding credit? Well, I, I echo your concerns. Credit everyone is involved. The senator, excuse me, the congressman from Mississippi, the people who signed it into law, and give make sure that everyone is accredited the praise that they deserve um, when it comes to this important um, occasion. Um, Greg and Lauren, real quick, <laughs> I'm going to actually play a video. I was in Mississippi, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, in November for the Mike Espy runoff, and I actually went by the house and we shot some video there. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but, Lauren, uh, Phil Bryant is being a complete ass. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. I mean, one of the one of the more un, you know not so talked about subtle forms of racism is trying to erase somebody and trying to pretend that somebody doesn't exist and their work doesn't exist. And Benny Thompson is, is really one of these people in Congress who gets a lot done with very little press attention. Mm -hmm. And this is extremely, as you pointed out, extremely intentional mm -hmm. on the part of the governor. Mm -hmm. Greg? Yeah, and, and another, another must-see viewing is Benny Thompson chairing at Homeland Security uh, Committee here right. in D.C. He's really moving ahead. You know, I respect Governor Bryant. I respect him as a white supremacist. 
Uh, his behavior, he's not acting like an ass. He's acting like the Klansman he is. He shares a surname with Carolyn Bryant, who still walks to earth, who's the reason Emmett Till got put in the ground. Let's be very clear about this. Not just Benny Thompson, but if you look at social media, a lot of black elected officials in Mississippi who have been pushing this years. Every time I fly into Mega Evers uh, Airport in Jackson, Mississippi, we go over to pay our respects over at Mega and Merle Evers' house. Let's be very clear. Phil Bryant's a white supremacist. And you don't compromise white supremacists. You don't com you don't have conversations with them. You break their political back. That that state is forty percent non-white. It's time to break their backs. Yeah, I agree with that, folks. Again, uh, again, when I was there in Mississippi in November, I, I dropped by uh, the home uh, where Merle and Megger Evers lived, and here is a tour uh, of that home. 32 Margaret Walker Alexander Drive here in Jackson, Mississippi. And behind me is the home, uh, the home that was of Mer Merle Evers and Megger Evers. Now, of course, he was the NAACP's field secretary uh, and Army veteran, of course, who was working uh, to get voting rights and other civil rights on behalf of African Americans. And so, uh, as you see here, this is a part of the Mississippi Freedom Trail. Uh, and so you see the sign here uh, that exists that lays out in terms of uh, the home here. And, of course, he was assassinated June 12, 1963. And this, this was placed during the 50th anniversary of the Freedom Rides, uh, which took place in 2011. Now, if you come on to this side over here of the sign, what you will see is uh, an explanation uh, that this was a three-bedroom home, and it was the first... Uh, middle-class subdivision built by black develop developers uh, here in Jackson. So there's lots of information here uh, about, of course, uh, this neighborhood, the home, but also uh, Megger Evers and who he was. And, of course, uh, he a um, uh, uh, major leader. I mean, he was a huge leader here uh, in Mississippi uh, who gave his life on behalf of uh, civil rights. And so uh, what took place, folks, we're going to walk this way. And so what took place on the night uh, President John F. Kennedy was given a speech about the importance of a civil rights bill. Um, what happened was Megger Everest was coming home. His family was inside uh, watching the speech. Um, and then, of course, uh, across the street, uh, to take a shot there, take a shot across the street. Across the street, hiding behind the cross, but in those wooded area there, was a white supremacist, Byron Della Beckwith. And so when Megger Everest uh, came home, uh, he pulled into the driveway here. Uh, and then uh, his car pulled in, and he went to the back of his car to get uh, some items out of his car, some T-shirts and signs, and that's when the shots rang out of uh, the killed Megger Evers. Of course, he was hit. Then, he, of course, he crawled his way uh, up this driveway right here uh, to the steps where his uh, wife and uh, his children came out. And, of course, it was horrible for them to actually see their husband and father uh, shot and killed. And what you see here, of course, you, he you see here, uh, th this, of course, is a National Historic Landmark. Uh, and so you see uh, the sign right here uh, that says that uh, the bullet passed through Megger's body and crashed through the lower left pane of the living room window. So the bullet went through his body and hit the window. Uh, and, of course, uh, and it has all the details here. Uh, these photos were taken by the Jackson Police Department shortly after uh, his murder. Uh, and you see an aerial shot as well. Uh, what, uh, where it uh, took place. And so, um, and it says here that uh, the aerial view shows the Evers home at the very top of the photograph. It depicts where assassin Byron Della Beckwith's car was seen earlier by witnesses at Joe's drive in. Uh, and of course, uh, in spot number two uh, indicates Beckwith's hiding place from which uh, he fired the shot that killed uh, Megger Evers. And so, uh, of course, uh, as I said, it's a National Historic Landmark. And you see some of the other photos that are up here as well uh, that marks. And so the image over here, this was the car uh, that Megger Evers was driving, the white car. And then, of course, he was shot. And then again, after he was shot, he crawled, made his way, uh, crawled uh, under the carport uh, to uh, his family there. Why is this important? Uh, because uh, Megger Evers was an American hero. Megger Evers was a brother who gave his life for civil rights. Here we are in Mississippi, uh, 2018. He was assassinated June 12, 1963. And it was his death that was one of the sparks that led to the 1964 Civil Rights Act and, of course, the 1965 Voting Rights Act. And um, this is a man who, again, gave his life, was fighting on behalf of other black folks. 
Mask. He gave his, he served his country, served in the military, bled, came home, but could not enjoy those same freedoms. And so here we are in 2018, U.S. Senate race, African-American Mike Espy is running for the United States Senate. Uh, the election will take place on November 27th. And for a lot of people out there, uh, they say, well, I don't really see why it matters. The reality is it matters because we're standing on hallowed ground. We're standing on the very place where Medgar Evers died in order for people to have the right to vote. Now, you might not say that doesn't mean anything. But the reality is a wife, children lost their father in order for us to have the right to vote. And so, folks, the reason Roland Martin Unfiltered matters is because unlike Governor Phil Bryan, we know who gets the credit, and that goes to Congressman Benny Thompson. Uh, we wanted to get him on the show, but he has some conflicts today, but we certainly will have him on the show on some other issues again. He spent 16 years making that possible for the home of Met and Merle Everett to become a national monument. So congratulations to uh, uh, Congressman Benny Thompson, and forget the haters uh, like Governor Phil Bryan of Mississippi. All right, folks, back to that Roland Martin Unfiltered video. In just one moment. All right, folks, calling all HBCU alumni, students, and leaders enter the Ford Motor Company HBCU M M Mobility Challenge and win 25000 bucks for your school. Building on their long-term support for, of HBCUs, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities through innovative solutions. Now, the winning program will receive a grant of up to $25,000 to implement their proposal. The deadline to apply is March 31st, 2019. Go to fgb.life, that's fgb.life, for more information and to apply. Ford goes further in our community. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. 